Hello learners, uh, welcome to our session today again, a continuation of our, what we are doing earlier on. Remember we are introduced our block revision in our last classes, so today is just a continuation of our, what, we'll be, uh, what we've been doing. So remember we are looking at a public finance in taxation, public finance in taxation, public finance and taxation and taxation so far we've looked at uh, question number one and question number two so in our today's class i want us to consider question number three i want us to talk about question number three and this concept the concept in our question number three in our block model paper this concept in our question number three in our block model paper is a concept to do with partnership taxation of partnership taxation of partnership it's a concept to do with the taxation of partnership very important concept and most of the cases it will always be tested most of the cases is always tested in our exams so it will be very ideal and very important for us to understand the whole concept when we'll be looking at what taxation of partnership it would be very ideal for us to understand the whole concept so what are some of the key concepts that you must always grasp anytime you are talking of a partnership what are some of the key concepts that you must always grasp key concepts under partnership what are the key concepts that you must always have at the back of your mind number one element that you must always know is that at any given time Whenever we are dealing with taxation of partner, partnership or rather partners, you'll find that partnership is never taxed as a business. Partnership business is never taxed. Partnership business, partnership business is never taxed. But the individuals by the individuals, by the individuals who have formed the partnership, by the individuals who have formed the partnership are the one to be taxed. By the individuals who have formed the partnership business, 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 are the one to be taxed. Are the one to be taxed are the one to be taxed that is very key concept for you to grasp anytime you are dealing with partnership you'll find that you never tax a partnership business but the individuals who have formed these partners are the one to be taxed say for example maybe you're having here say like uh, i'm having a talk of uh, partner a and partner b they have come together and they have formed a and b enterprise so we are saying that A and B enterprise will not be taxed. But it is partner A and partner B who are going to be taxed. And how will they be taxed? A and B enterprise will generate a profit or loss. That profit or loss is going to be shared to our partners according to their profit sharing ratio. Then uh, afterwards, you are going to tax these individuals. Of course, using what? The individual graduated scale rate so these are very key concepts that you must have in mind these are very key concepts that you must have in mind key concept number two you should be able to understand some of the non-allowable expenses in partnership non-allowable expenses in partnership non-allowable expenses in partnership non-allowable expenses in partnership we should be able to understand the non-allowable expenses in partnership and when you are talking of non-allowable expenses in partnership my good students what will you be talking about number one element number one element that you must always have in mind you know very well that salaries to partners will always be taken as non-allowable talk of salaries to partners salaries to partners will always be taken as non-allowable talk of number two Commission and bonuses to partners. Commission and bonuses to partners will always be taken as non-allowable. Talk of uh, drawings to 
partners will always be taken as non-allowable. Interest on capital to partners. Interest on uh, capital to partners. Interest on capital to partners will always be taken as an allowable expense. Talk of uh, number three, we'll always be talking about private expenses of partners. These are some of the private expenses attributable to our partners. It's always going to be taken as an allowable and any other allowable expense, any other, any other non allowable expense, any other non allowable expense, any other non allowable expense, just like any other business just like any other business. We are going to take them as non-allowable expense. Then another key element that you must always have at the back of your mind is steps in determining the partnership income. Because why am I avoiding allowable expense? Because allowable expense, these are just like any other business. These are just like any other business. It's only on an allowable expense which I will be introducing some of these components like salaries to partners, commission and bonus, drawings, interest on capital to partners and all that, right? Now, number three, we should be able to understand steps in computing or determining steps in computing or determining steps in computing or determining the partnership income. Steps in computing or determining the partner's income the partner's income steps in computing or determining the partner's income steps in computing or determining the partner's income so looking at these steps my good students step number one step number one that you must always have in mind is this step number one so term it as step number one compute the adjusted business income 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 just like any other business 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 compute the adjusted business income just like any other business and whenever you're talking of just like any other business, kindly always recall the two formulas that you had talked about last time. This is the gross profit approach and the reported profit approach. And I believe you have talked of the formulas. Step number two. 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 Determine or compute. Profit to be shared. Determine or compute profit to be shared. And share the profit or loss and share the profit or loss according to the profit sharing ratio or agreement. According to the partner's profit sharing ratio according to the partner's profit sharing ratio or agreement or agreement or agreement or agreement and how will we determine this profit to be shared my good students to determine the profit to be shared this is where we are going to prepare what is known as partner's profit allocation schedule we are going to prepare what is known as partners profit allocation schedule. We are going to prepare what is known as partners profit allocation schedule. We are going to prepare what is known as partners profit allocation schedule. And how will this schedule looks like? We are going to have our details here. We are going to have our partners are here assuming i'm having christine and on this other case assuming maybe you are talking of what robert so we have our total here 
So having this case, we'll be talking of our partner's profit allocation schedule. We'll be talking of our profit, partner's profit allocation schedule. And this is what we'll be looking at. I'll be talking of salaries, of course, to partners. We'll be talking of salaries. I'll be having our figure there. We'll be talking of, talk of uh, maybe uh, interest on capital. Interest on capital. Interest on capital. We should be having our figures there. Right. We should be talking of uh, maybe talk of uh, bonuses and commission. Bonus and commission. Bonus and commission. We should be having our figures here. We should be talking of a concept known as bonus and commission. Talk of uh, maybe uh, in this case we are talking of uh, interest on drawings. Interest on drawings. Interest on drawings. But interest on drawings we are going to deduct. Interest on drawings we are going to deduct. Why? It is reducing the income that our partners are supposed to earn. Then talk of a share of profit. Share of profit. Talk of share of profit. So this is an area that you must be very good at. Whenever you're talking of share of profit, this is an area that you must be very good at and understand the concept very well. So I want you guys to grasp this. You see, in step number one, we had determined our adjusted business income or profit, right? So it is what we've determined in step one is the one that I'm going to put it here. The moment I'm having it at that point, the balance that after this case, maybe I'm going, in this case, we're going to take this profit or income. We deduct salaries, we deduct interest on capital, we deduct commission and bonus, we adjust it with interest on drawings. So the balance that I'm going to remain with here, that balance is the one that we're going to share. That balance is the one that we're going to share according to our profit sharing ratio. That's the balance that we're going to share according to our profit sharing ratio. This is the balance of taking whatever that you determine as our income. We less all this component of uh, salaries and wages, uh, interest on capital, bonus and commission. Now this should give us income from partnership business. Income from partnership business. Income from partnership business. Income from partnership business. We are going to have it here. Income from partnership business. Then consider other incomes. Consider other incomes. Consider other incomes. Say for example, maybe I'm having rental income. Just an example. Maybe you are having rental income. So talk of your rental income here. Talk of your rental income at that point. Having our rental income and any other income that we'll be having. You're not limited to only rental income and any other income. So this should give us our total taxable income. Total taxable income. TTI. Total taxable income is what I'll be having it at that point. Trust you me. The moment you are able to grasp this concept, a summary on what you are supposed to do anytime you are handling taxation of partnership, my good student, it is as if you are already through with the concept of partnership. So long as you recall, many a times that partnership will also be incorporated with the concept of what? Incomplete records. And we had looked at the concept of incomplete records. So make sure you are able to grasp, you are able to grasp this concept. You are able to grasp this concept. So after we've understood the key concept on partnership, this is a question that I want us to do. Block model paper question. It is a block model paper question. This is a question number three. Question number three. These are question, question number three, block model paper, question number three. So this is what you are told, my good student. You are told that in question number three, Kalimo and Shika commenced a trading in partnership as Kashi Enterprises on 1st January 2020. They share profits and losses in the ratio of 2 is to 1 for Kalimo and Shika respectively. 
The partners were to receive monthly salaries of 18,000 and 22,000 for Kalemu and Shika respectively. The partnership did not maintain a complete set of accounting records. The moment I've seen that, the concept of incomplete records should click at the back of our mind. Then this is what we are told, that the receipts, I'm having our receipts, we have our payments, we have our payments, we have our payments, we have our payments there, we have our payments there. Then the other part you are told, the other part, this is what you are told, additional information. Believing that you are taking a screenshot, believing that you are taking a screenshot, so that it will be very easy for us to work it out. Additional information you are told, the following payments were made in cash, from cash sales before banking. The following payments were made in cash from cash sales before banking. We have motor vehicle expenses per annum, wages per annum, sundry expenses per annum. Then I'm also given our weekly drawings for Kalimu and Shika. Note 2, we are told that uh, during the year, discounts received from the suppliers amounted to 132500 while discounts allowed to customers amounted to 118,000. So I'm having a concept of discount received and discounts allowed, right? Number three, as at first December, as at first December 2020, electricity and insurance prepaid were 25,000 and 12,800 respectively. Correct? So these are the prepayments that we do have. Note four. Depreciation was to be provided on equipment at 10% on straight line basis. And remember, any time you are dealing with taxation of uh, a tax, the concept of depreciation will always assume it. Depreciation will never affect us. Depreciation should not affect us any time we are dealing with the concept of what? With the concept of partnership, or rather with the concept of tax. Correct? Then come to note number six. We are told that, <coughs> not, not, not number six, not five, sorry. As of 31st December, the amount owed to suppliers was 780, while the amount owed by customers was 1,420,000. The concept of balance carried down for debtors and creditors. Note six, an amount of 82,000 owed by Jamila Mamba a customer proved irrecoverable and is to be written off as a bad debt. Full stop continuation, you are told. This amount was excluded in the total amount owed by customers as of 31st December 2020. I'm having a concept or a component of bad debts. Kindly mark that note. Note 7, this is what you are told. Salaries and wages include salaries to the partners. And as we clearly, we've clearly seen, the salaries to partners are always going to be taken as what? Non-allowable expenses. Note 8. The go-down had been occupied since 1st November at an annual rent of 50000 Uh-huh. The go-down has been occupied since November. So I'm talking of since November at an annual rent of 450000 Included in the interest expense is the interest on the partner's capital contribution at a rate of 5%. So in our interest, we had a component of uh, interest on capital. And interest on capital, you've clearly seen, we've seen it as what? Well, as non-allowable expense, right? Note 10, the wear and tear allowance was agreed with the revenue authority at 112000 for the year ended at 1st December 2020. Recall, we mentioned that any time we are dealing with a uh, talk of uh, capital allowance, and I'm given directly, examiner has eased our work. So we'll just be taking the figure that we are given there. Note 11, closing inventory was valued at 620000 on 31st December 2020. I'm given the component of what? Closing inventory. Assume that the year of income had 52 weeks. Look at this question. We are told, number one, required adjusted partnership profit or loss for the year ended at 1st December 2020. And number two, distribution schedule 
of the profit or loss calculated in C1 above, in C1 above, in C1 above. So my good students, if you are given such a question, the most important part is to know where are you going to start from. That is the most important part in any question. Where will be your starting point? Where will be your starting point? That's the most and very important concept for any question that we will be looking at anytime you are dealing with computation questions. Our starting point. Remember, yes, the examiner is asking us to determine the adjusted partnership profit or loss for the year. And if you can recall, while looking at our approaches, we mentioned two approaches. So kindly I'm waiting for you guys to take a screenshot of this question. Or you can get it in our phone application. For those who are viewing us maybe on our YouTube, or for those who are viewing us on our Facebook or Twitter, you can get this question in our phone application. That is MDRASA phone application. Downloadable from Play Store. So if we have seen that part, then the first part was this. I want us guys to take a screenshot of that question. I want us guys to take a screenshot of that question. Mm -hmm. So, I believe we've taken a screenshot of that question, my good student. So, given such a question, where are you going to start from? That's the most important question that you are going to ask yourselves. Remember, this is what you mentioned. Allow me to erase here because I believe you are done with this place. Allow me to erase here because I believe you are done with this place. The most, important, the most important step that you must always identify anytime you are dealing with this question is where should be our starting point. And this is what we'll be having. We must be able to understand the approaches of determining the taxable income. And looking at these approaches, my good students, we normally tend to talk of two approaches. We normally tend to talk of, number one, the gross profit approach. We normally tend to talk about the gross profit approach. And by the way, this concept is also very important for those students who are doing Section 6. Advanced Public Finance and Taxation. So, the first approach, we normally term it as gross profit approach. And at what point will you use the gross profit approach? You are going to use the gross profit approach when you've seen that you are required is, when you've seen that you are required, the examiner has asked you to determine or compute, determine or compute the taxable income. Determine or compute the taxable income. That is when you are supposed to use what? The gross profit approach. At what point will you use the second approach? Adjust, or rather talk of uh, this is a reported profit. Reported uh, profit. And by the way, before you go to that, also in the event that you are given, say, like, uh, in the event that uh, you are given, uh, say, like a component of, uh, yes, you are given your profit, and the examiner has given you a lead or a guide on what to do. Maybe he has given you further instruction. You can also use that concept of the component of gross profit approach. Now, talk of note number two or approach number two, reported profit approach, reported profit approach, reported profit approach. This is our number two. Number one, number two. At what point will you use reported profit approach required? When you've seen that the examiner has asked you to determine or compute, determine or compute adjusted taxable income. And he hasn't, he hasn't given us any other further instruction. You are told to determine your adjusted taxable income. These are profit or loss. Look at the difference. Here, for you to use the gross profit approach, 
for you to use your gross profit approach, my good student, what are we talking about? We are talking about if we are required to determine or compute the taxable income. For us to use our reported profit approach, we are going to use our reported profit approach, my good student, if the examiners ask you to determine or compute the adjusted, the adjusted, the adjusted taxable income or profit. But mark this concept very well. But in the event that you have been asked to determine your adjusted taxable income or profit and you are not given this profit, in the event that you are asked to determine your adjusted taxable income or profit and you are not given this profit, kindly use the gross profit approach. Kindly use the gross profit approach. I repeat that again. In the event that you are asked to determine the adjusted taxable income or loss and you are not given this reported profit, my good students, kindly use the gross profit approach. Use the gross profit approach. Like in our question, if you can clearly see, in our question here, we were told to determine we are told to determine the adjusted partnership profit or loss for the year ending 31st December, right? But I am not given this reported profit. So, allow to use our gross profit approach. Allow to use our gross profit approach. These are some of the ways that you can break your question down. For you to mark your starting point, these are some of the ways that you should break uh, your question down. And as I normally say, the moment you have the concept right, working out such questions will be very easy for us. It will be very, very, very easy for us. It will be very, very easy for us. So, in this case of ours, we've clearly seen that you are going to use the gross profit approach. Because, yes, the examiner has requested us, the examiner has requested us for us to use or to determine the adjusted taxable profit but we were not given this reported profit so we need to use our gross profit approach and in determining our gross profit approach you know very well that for me to determine our gross profit we'll always be talking of what our sales minus cost of sales Model paper question number three. For us to determine our gross profit, you know very well, we'll be talking of our sales minus cost of sales. That should be your starting point. The moment I know very well that I need to work out this one. The other question that you can ask ourselves is, were we given ourselves? In this case, were we given ourselves? Because I know very well, for us to determine our total sales, we'll always be talking of our cash sales, We'll always be talking of our cash sales plus credit sales. We'll always be talking of our cash sales plus the credit sales. I'm going to ask myself this question. What was I given in this case? Was I given our cash sales or were we given our credit sales? Because many a times, many a times the examiner will not give you your credit sales. But we'll always be given our cash sales. So... Kindly let us identify our cash sales. How much was I given as our cash sales? We need to identify that one first. We need to determine our cash sales. We need to determine our cash sales. So how will we determine our cash sales? How will we determine our cash sales? Let us go in our question and identify our cash sales and identify our cash sales. I'm going to share the question here with us. I'm going to share the question here with us. Look at this case. We are told that, uh, of course, all the details in our receipts. Look at our receipts and our payments. Ideally, if you want to identify your cash sales, just go to your receipts. Here, I'm having our cash sales. How much? 12,700,000. So that is our cash sales, right? I'm going to have, amongst our cash sales, we have the cash sales, banked cash sales. Banked cash sales. We are given a figure of, that is a 2 million. Banked cash sales. 
you can clearly see I was given a figure of uh, 12 million 700,000 12 million 700,000 right 12 million 700,000 but I want us to go to note number I want us to go to note number one my good students additional information not one additional information not one still I'm going to share with us here additional information not one look at this case additional information not one look at this additional information not one what were we told what were we told we are told that the following payments were made in cash from cash sales, right? Before banking. The following payments were made in cash from cash sales before banking. Before banking. So, this, yes, were the cash sales, but you never banked them. Whatever that we've recorded, these are the cash sales which were banked. So, how much was cash sales that were not banked? So, Kindly just come and have here unbanked cash sales. Unbanked cash sales. Unbanked cash sales. Looking at our unbanked cash sales, this is what we'll be having. Looking at our unbanked cash sales, this is what we'll be having, my good students. I'm having the first case motor vehicle expenses. So we have motor vehicle expenses. We have motor vehicle expenses, motor vehicle expenses, and I was uh, given a figure of 138,000, 138,000. We have wages per annum, we are given our wages, and our wages, we are given 162,000, my good students. We are also given sundry expenses, talk of our sundry expenses, sundry expenses. In our sundry expenses, I was given a figure of 35,000. Talk of our weekly drawings. Weekly drawings, weekly drawings, weekly drawings. Weekly drawings I'm given for Kalimu. And we have for Shika. And we have for Shika. So for weekly drawings, my good students, if you can clearly see, I was given 7,200 per week. And for the other person, I was given 6,400 per week. How many weeks were we given during that year? According to our note, number 11, just below note 11, we were given 52 weeks. So I'm going to multiply this one by 52. 7,200 by 52. And the other one by 52. So we'll be having 7,200. 7,200 by 52. We will be having 7,200 by 52. To give us 374,000. 374,400. Whereas 6,400 by 52. That should give us 332,800. Right? So total... We should be talking of how much my good student plus three seventy four four hundred plus thirty five thousand plus one sixty two thousand plus one thirty eight thousand. So therefore, I'm going to talk of a figure of one million forty two thousand two hundred one million forty two thousand two hundred. I'm just summing up all this you can assist me to sum up to see if you are correct then we add 12 million seven hundred thousand so you can clearly come and say that my cash sales we had 13 million seven hundred and forty two thousand two hundred this will be our cash sales that will be our cash sales that will be our cash sales a good question that we are going to ask ourselves here is that what about our credit sales? Do we have our credit sales? Because remember we mentioned anytime we are talking of our total sales, we are going to talk of our cash sales. We add our credit sales. So the question is, do we have our credit sales? We weren't given direct. And 
Can we determine that? Yes, you can determine. And how will you know that you need to have your credit cells? At any given point, when you've seen the examiner has given you balance brought down for debtors or balance carried down for debtors, always know that there was a component of credit cells. And if not given your credit cells, can you determine your credit cells? Yes, you can determine our credit cells if not given by preparing what is known as our receivables or sales ledger control account. So I need to prepare our receivables, receivables slash sales ledger control account. You need to prepare our receivable slash sales ledger control account. The question is, do we still remember this format? Do we still remember the format of receivables control account? Of course, on my debit side, because it's an asset account, I should be talking of balance brought down, which in this case we aren't given. Right? Then come and identify components such as receipts from debtors. Receipts from debtors. Receipts from debtors. In our question, were we given any receipts from debtors? Talk of our receipts from debtors. Talk of receipts from debtors. Let this stands for debtors. Look at our question here. Were we given these receipts from debtors? Uh, of course, you're going to look at under our income. So after just below cash sales, I'm having what receipts from debtors 5.2. We have receipts from debtors of 5.2. So therefore, we should be talking of 5.2. 5 million 200,000. Did you have any component of uh, like uh, discounts allowed? Discount allowed? Are we given discount allowed? Yes, you are given discount allowed. If you go to note number two, during the year, discounts received from the supplier amounted to 132500 were discount allowed to customer amounted to 118000 So I'm having 118000 being our discounts allowed. Identify if we had any bad debts. In our question, were we given any area where we had our bad debts? Note number six, an amount of 82000 owned by Jamila Mamba, a customer proved irrecoverable and is to be written off as a bad debt. This amount was excluded in the total owed by customers as of 31st December 2020. So I'm having bad debts amounting to 82,000. Consider if we had any components such as what? Return inwards. Return inwards. In this case, we didn't have return inwards. But if I could be having a return inwards, you could have taken it at that point. Then consider your balance carried down. The question is, are we given balance carried down for debtors? Yes, I think we are given in this question. If we go to note number five, what were we told? As of 31st December 2020, the amount owed to suppliers was 780, while the amount owed by customers was 1,420,000. So it should be having here 1,420,000. 1,420,000. The other question would be did we have component like dishonored checks? If we could be having some of the components of dishonored checks, we could have a place it here. But in this case, we didn't have. So the balancing figure should give us our credit sales. The balancing figure should give us our credit sales. Balancing figure should give us our credit sales. And the question is, in our case, what will be your balancing figure? So I need to determine the total there. We need to determine the total then we need to determine the total here. 
So what will be our total, my good students? We should be talking of 5.2. We add 118,000. We add 82,000. We add 1,420,000. To give me a figure of 6,820,000. To give us a figure of 6,820,000. So therefore, my credit sales, I should be talking of 6,820,000. $820, as simple as that. So right now, the question is, can we determine our total sales? Because our total sales, I need to determine our cash sales. We add our credit sales we add our credit sales we add our credit sales so to that point i know very well that we can determine our we can determine our total sales we can determine our total sales and what would be our total sales my good students what will be our total sales in this case what will be our total sales here so my total sales at this point, this is what we are going to take. My total sales, our total sales. So my total sales, we should be having this. I should be having cash sales of 13,742,200. We add our credit sales of 6,820,000. That should give us a figure of how much? That should give us a figure of 13,742,200. So that should give us a figure of 20,562,200. Being our total sales. 20,562,200. Being our total sales being our total sales and you know very well that for us to determine our gross profit i'll also have to consider our cost of sales right so top of our cost of sales what about our cost of sales my good students to determine our cost of sales you know very well we will be taking our opening inventory we add our purchases, then we are going to less our closing inventory, right? That should give us our cost of sales. So come and identify what were we given and what were we not given. We can clearly see we weren't given our opening inventory, but we are given our closing inventory. What about our purchases, my good students? To determine our purchases, to determine our purchases, to determine our purchases, we know very well we are going to talk of our cash purchases. We add our credit purchases. We add our credit purchases. We add our credit purchases. That should give us our total purchases. This should give us our total purchases. Now, again, the same, same concept. Let us break it down. Let us break it down. How will we identify our cash purchases? Were we given our cash purchases in this question of ours? Cash purchases. Cash purchases, I was given a figure of how much. Come to our question and look at our credit side. So, our question here. What did you have? Did you have any form of purchases? Payments, equipment, rent for go down, salaries, and wages. Then I'm having purchase for resale. So we had our purchases. So I'm going to take our purchases here. In that case, I was given a figure of how much? Let us take the figure. I was given a purchases of purchase for resale. I was given 9.9. .9. Are you seeing that figure there? I was given 9.9. .9. So I'm going to take 9.9. .9 being our cash purchases what about our credit purchases what about our credit purchases were we given our credit purchases my good students were we given our credit purchases 
if not given we have to determine by the virtue of not number by the virtue of not we had it in a not number what we had it in a not number 5 as of thirty first December, the amount owed to suppliers was seven eighty, while the amount owed by customer was fourteen twenty. So I need to determine our credit sales, or rather credit purchase. If not given your credit purchase, you have to prepare your payables control account. You have to pre prepare your payables slash purchases. Control account, control account, control account, control account. And the question is, do you still remember the format of control account for our purchases? We must remember this, we must remember this, right? You must remember this. So our opening balance should be on the credit side. Balance brought down and we are looking at our creditors balance, right? In this case, we didn't have. Talk of payments. Payments to creditors. Payments to creditors. We weren't given. What about discounts received? Discount received, my good students. Discount received, we are given. And discount received, we are given in note number one. Note number... Note number two. During the year, discount received from the suppliers amounted to 132,500. So discount received, we do have 132,500. Discount received, we do have 132,500. Uh-huh. The other concept or question that we should be having is, what about our balance carry down? Balance carry down, what will we have? We are given there in that note number in note number five. You are given balance broda balance carry down for suppliers. We are given seven hundred and eighty thousand. Seven eighty thousand. So having that case, we can clearly come and determine our credit purchases. Our credit purchases, which should be our balancing figure. So talk of our credit purchases. Credit purchases here. How much will you be having as our credit purchases? How much will you be having as our credit purchases? We should be talking of 780,000, my good students, plus 132,500. That should give me 912,500. Whereas in this case, we didn't have so 912,500. 912,500. So total purchases here, total purchases. We are going to have how much, my good students? We are going to take, we are going to take uh, cash purchases 9.9. .9. We add credit purchases 912,500. 912,500. So that should give us plus 9.9. .9. That should give us 10,812,500. Being our total purchases being our total purchases now when we are there it means that now we're in a good position to determine our gross profit it means that we are in a very good position to determine our gross profit so how will we determine our gross profit my good students to determine our gross profit i know very well i'm going to have our now determining our gp to determine our gp we have our sales here right for sales, we have our sales of how much? 20 million. 20 million. 562. 200. With less cost of sales. Less cost of sales. Deducting our cost of sales, what will we be having? Deducting our cost of sales, I'm going to have our opening inventory which we didn't have, our purchases here, we've determined our purchases to be a figure of 10,812,500. Closing inventory, 
closing inventory, we were given a figure of how much in our last note, I think. Look at our last note. Look at our last note. Closing inventory, we were given a figure of 620,000. 620,000. 620,000. So that should give us our cost of sales of how much? That should give us our cost of sales of minus 620,000 to give us our cost of sales of 10 million, 192,500. Now my gross profit will be how much? 20 million, 562,200 minus answer to give me a gross profit where we are going to start from so my gross profit here will be a figure of 10 million three hundred and sixty nine thousand seven hundred and this is where we are going to start from this is where we are going to start from so the moment you grasp this concept right it will be very very simple for us to work out any question but the advice that I can give you if you want to be very quick in your exams. Of course, we have the direct entries and you have the format at the back of your mind. You know very well that you need to use your, you need to prepare your statement using the gross profit approach. Kindly come and record all the direct entries that you have. The allowable expenses. Then this part of working, do it as the last part. That's the advice that I can give you if you want to be very quick. So, record all the direct entries first. After you recorded all the direct entries, now come and insert your working. Because you'll see in our next session, as we'll be preparing our statement, you'll find that it'll be very easy. We'll be having a lot of direct entries. So, we'll just be inserting all the direct entries. Then when it comes to this working, that's where you're going to incorporate it on top there as part of our gross profit. You'll view it as you'll be working and out, as you'll be working it out and you see it is very, very simple. So to this juncture, my good student, I want you to join me in the next session where we will be clearing this question. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.